Hey guys, it's Jake here with E Trailer. Today we've got a 2023 Ford Bronco Sport, and we're going to be showing you how to install the Red Arc Tow Pro Elite brake controller. Now, the biggest reason why a lot of people like the Red Arc Tow Pro Elite brake controller is because of exactly what you see now. There's not much to it. Uh, you just have the control knob here, and then the module itself, the brake controller, will be mounted back underneath your dash wherever you find fits best. Um, it's better than a in a than a traditional style brake controller in my opinion because especially in the Bronco Sport you don't have room for that big box that you have to mount in a certain orientation in order for it to work, work properly. This brake controller is going to feature two different modes which is unique to a brake controller. You'll have proportional mode which will be blue that's going to be a normal proportional brake controller so as you ease into the brakes the brake controller is going to ease up to the power that you have it set up. User mode is going to be, say if you're pulling a trailer off-road, you can put it in user mode and it's going to jump to whatever you have it set at rather than gradually rising to it. Um, in user mode, you do have to be careful. If you're towing on the road, user mode is not going to be the best option. Off-road, it's a great option because if you're ascending or descending on a hill, you just barely tap on the brake and it'll jump to whatever you have it set at. Proportional is going to follow the brake pedal and slowly ramp up and you can get it really dialed in to match your vehicle. To switch between the two modes, we are in proportional right now. So you'll see the blue LED. You'll just need to turn it to zero, hold the brake, and tap the button twice. And you can see green now. That means we are in user mode. When you're towing a trailer, there's a lot of times when somebody will either cut you off or you have to hurry up and make a stop and you don't want to push down on the brakes in your vehicle too hard. Most traditional brake controllers will have a trigger style and that is for those cases where you need the manual override for the brakes on your trailer. With the Red Arc Topo Elite, you will just have that at the push of a button. So you push it whenever you need it and then you can back off. You can also dial, we have uh, controls from 0 to 10. Um, you'll just have to figure out what is right for your trailer. I often recommend starting with 5 and going up or down from there. Now as far as what the Red Arc Tow Pro Elite is compatible with trailer wise is you can tow trailers with one, two, or three axles. With the Bronco Sport um, I highly doubt you're going to be towing anything that requires three axles so the Tow Pro Liberty is designed for either a single axle trailer or a tandem axle trailer. It's just up to you what you decide you want to go with. The installation for this process is not too difficult. Uh, probably the most difficult part of it is going to be tying into the brake signal behind the dash. Uh, the wires on these Ford Broncos are so small, um, you're going to have to tie them together, but I will show you that connection so you don't have to look for it. We'll be able to tell you exactly which wires they are. With that being said, let's go ahead and show you how to get it installed. To start our wiring, we're going to need to remove some of these screws off the back in order to pull the panel back so that we can see what's behind here and we can get to the existing wiring. We're using a seven millimeter socket to remove these bolts. To get our factory four pole off of the factory bracket, we'll need to pull down. Uh, you may have to do a combination of pulling out on the plastic and pulling down, but we'll try to work it off. There we go. We'll pull it over here to the side so we can work with it. We started with a long bracket, which you can find on our website. We cut off about half of it, and then we screwed the top of it into um, our pre-mounted bracket from Ford. And then we attached our seven-way to the bracket that will come in your seven-way kit. And we ran our wiring along the side here, made our four-pole connection. You'll just plug the four pole on the back side of the uh, seven way into the four pole on your vehicle. And then we ran our ground wire up to a spot on the frame. Use a self tapper that comes in your kit. We ended up having to put a little extension on it with some white wire that we had. You just want to make sure it's about the same thickness. Uh, but we got our ground there. We connected the black wire to the black wire on our seven pole. 
and the white wire in our duplex to the blue wire. And the way we ran those up, we'll eventually zip tie those up to something safe up in our bumper. But we ran our duplex up, you can see it here. You want to stay away from anything hot or moving. So we'll come back and put some zip ties on this. Ran it over, um, above our spring, above our other body mount. And then we came down, you can see right here. And then we took all these fasteners out of this underbody panel and you're able to just slide the wire up inside of here. And then we came up to the front, took these two screws out, and that's gonna take a Torx bit head, pop those out, and then fished a fish wire down from our engine bay, and it came out here. We taped it off and drug it up into the engine bay. This is where our wire ran up through our engine bay. We ran it up. Uh, we took this one bolt out, ran it underneath here, just so that it keeps its nice clean look. And then we took one of our circuit breakers and installed it here under the engine bay. We just used the self tappers in the kit, self tapped it into the frame. And the larger of the three are, is going to be the 40 amp. That's what we're gonna use for our 12 volt line, which is your black wire coming from your duplex. And then we'll take that same, uh, another extension of black wire and run it over to the positive post of the battery. Next thing that we did is we ran our spare duplex wire. I stripped all the gray uh, jacketing off of it so that we know the difference. Uh, but we ran the spare wiring through a grommet on the, uh, the firewall. It's gonna have a little nib sticking out, kind of looks like a fingertip. We just cut the tip off back here. I was able to get my hand back in there and cut it off and then went inside and fish wired these wires out, then cut them to length. And then we came over to our circuit breakers and made our other connections. So the black wire coming from inside of our vehicle is gonna to come to the 20 amp auxiliary side of our circuit breaker. And then the battery side will go over to the positive post. And then again with the the black wire coming from our duplex from the back of our vehicle will go to our auxiliary because that's going to our 12 volt signal um, at our seven way and then ran another jumper wire from our battery signal on this um, circuit breaker over to our battery. We're going to wait to make these connections till we have everything else wired up. Find a place for a switch to go. This is going to be the most important part of it uh, because there's a lot of places that these switches are not going to fit. We ended up finding a pretty good place on our switch panel here. Over to the right, this knob, you wanna do two things. You wanna see if the knob itself is gonna fit, which it should fit perfect right in there. And then we also pulled the panel off to look behind it, and we have more than enough space that we don't have to worry about it. If you were to mount it a little lower, you'd have to worry about some plastic panels, or if you decided you wanted it on the center console, um, a lot of people like to install them near their cup holders because their hands are there anyway. So in the case of emergency, they know their button's right there. Um, but we're going to mount ours on the switch panel and we'll show you how to do it. You can see the mark we made on the back side of this instrument panel. We're going to take a very, very small pilot hole and drill a hole to start with and then we'll move up in size to the size recommended by Red Arc. Now we use this step bit to get to this point. We're gonna to continue to use it till we get to that outer edge. Uh, we did use the 2564 drill bit to see our determined uh, ending hole size, but we found that this plastic is biting a little too hard on a standard drill bit. So we'll use a stepper bit to get a little further along. And we'll finish it off with our 2564. We'll take a, a knife or a small file and clean up these edges a little bit. And we'll take our guide sticker that comes in your kit. And you want to make sure it's center it over your hole 
and straight up and down too. Now we'll take our connector, slide it up on the back side. You just want to make sure this, this dial is turned all the way to the left before putting your switch on. And we'll take this clear nut and thread it down onto our connector there. With our dial turned all the way to the left, we can now put our button on. You just want to make sure it's straight on this tab at the top. And you want to also make sure it still clicks. To get your control module in place, you'll just want to find a sturdy place to either zip tie it or use self tappers to tap it into place. It is not recommended to zip tie it to any wiring or anything that's moving. It needs to know its orientation. It can be mounted in any orientation, but it will have to learn what orientation it, it's in. Um, in our Bronco Sport here, there is a panel underneath here, but right on top, there's a nice flat surface. Before we get this zip tied in place, we're going to make our wiring connections to make it a lot easier on ourselves. So we'll connect the uh, harness that has the four wires coming out of it, and then your remote wire will go into the other side. Now we can stick this back up in place and we'll zip tie it. Now we are gonna make our connections for the Red Arc brake controller. Uh, we installed the ETBC7 kit that's on our website in this Bronco Sport. If you'd like to see that installation, you can check that out. Uh, but we're gonna go ahead and make these connections and show you how we did them. For our wiring, we started with the blue and black wires coming from our Red Arc. We connected it to the white and black wire that we ran from our engine bay. The black will connect to black and the blue will connect to the white, which is going back to our seven way. And then we took the white wire from our Red Arc controller and grounded it to the firewall using a self-tapping screw and a ring terminal. And then the most difficult connection is going to be the connection to our brake light signal, which is a purple with white stripe. Uh, there will be two wires and it is on this light blue connector that you can see right there. There's gonna be two wires into the same plug. You'll need to cut those wires, tie them together, and then run your red wire from your Red Arc controller into that. For the white wire coming from our ETBC7 on the back of our vehicle, we'll want to connect that to the blue wire on our brake controller. Now with all our wires bundled up underneath the remote wire, we did just take a couple zip ties, um, tie up some, ex some of that extra slack. Uh, we can make our final connection inside the cab, which is going to be our remote wire. So we push that into place. Now we can tuck our wires back behind there and put our panel back. Our two final connections we need to make under our hood are going to be our two 12 volt lines. We'll take off the nut off of our battery and install both of these. Well guys, with everything working properly, that's gonna do it for installation of the Red Arc Tow Pro Elite brake controller on our 2023 Bronco Sport.